The University of Cape Town housed its special collections and African Studies archives in the Jagger Library and Reading Room. This library housed hundreds and thousands of books, papers and audiovisual collections, which included some of the university's oldest and most precious materials. One was wowed by the absolute grandeur of it. It was a majestic library, a beautiful reading room that had been fully renovated and refurbished to its original look and feel. Um, a very scholarly place, um, a place that was managed by professionals who knew what it housed and the value of what it housed. On Sunday the 18th of April 2021, a felt fire unexpectedly caught a light on Table Mountain and ravaged uncontrollably across its slopes. By late afternoon, the fire had reached the University of Cape Town's campus and jumped onto the roof of the Jagger Library, quickly engulfing the entire building in flames and smoke. I remember calling my facilities manager and asking him if everything was well with the library and he says no at that time it seemed to be okay. 20 minutes later he calls me and says you better come on site. And I stood on the plaza watching this um, building aflame and I can tell you it was one of the most gutting experiences looking at something and at something that was beyond your control. Um, you really stand, I, I stood there completely empty of thought. Then on Tuesday, I had to be on campus. And thankfully I was able to meet with the technical team and um, they took me to the entrance of the Jagger Library and into the foyer and I saw a little bit of what was not burnt and, um, and the question then arose when I was confronted with this image of flooding and water just pouring down into the library, into the basements and my first thought was that we need to evacuate this library and we need to take out everything. But I thought, let me also consult with my archivist. I got a call from Ojala to say, Michal, good news, the basements are intact. Can you come on site now to show the technical teams around? So I, you know, jumped in my car, I was in the middle of a meet, online meeting, jumped, got dressed, sort of, jumped in my car, and never driven, you know, so like hurriedly and worriedly all the way to campus. And of course, the whole neighborhood was blocked off and I had to get through like police and security to get onto campus. And of course, then I arrived and I saw Jala, I gave her a big hug. And then I went with um, some people from properties and services down into the basement and saw what we had. And then I said to them, have you guys seen the bottom basement? What's that like? And they were like, there's a bottom basement? And I said, yes, let's go, I'll show you. So we went with flashlights, I had my cell phone and we went down the ramps all the way down to the level one, which was where all the AV was. And I remember stepping forward on the ramp in pitch black and suddenly I just felt like my whole leg was just wet all the way above the knee. And I was only halfway down the ramp. So I screamed. I just remember screaming really as loud as possibly I can scream. When we saw the building in flames, we thought that everything was lost. And so that was a huge sigh of relief that we all breathed, you know, okay, the basements haven't been breached. So all the materials there were not lost, not knowing that the water was going to present as a second disaster. So we actually experienced two disasters. And then the, I remember the woman next to me, Katie Smart, a heritage like a person who was on site to help us. She said, come, let's go, let's pump the water out immediately. And that's how it started. That's how the whole thing started of getting everything out. It was like immediate. In the days immediately following the fire, Nearly 2,000 volunteers responded to a call for help with evacuating materials from the library. Crates and crates full of threatened materials were hauled out of the library's basements through long human chains until every last book and paper had been removed 
and triaged for repair and conservation. So we started um, from that doorway on University Avenue into the archival basement, which was really, it was dark and damp. It was wet, they had these big kind of spotlights up because obviously there was no electricity. Um, it was compactuses, so you only had a very small space to work in. Um, there was a somebody, Nancy, a conservationist, who set up a whole system where the aisles were marked. This was aisle one, each compactus got a number, each shelf got a number. So we took stuff off, put it into boxes, and the boxes, all the crates were marked with all those details, which is why they've been able to, to put the archive together. Yeah, I mean, we thought all our print material in African studies had gone. Um, and certainly a lot did. We lost from naught, which is basically media, and up to um, 600, which is a kind of um, medicine, botany, that area. So all our political um, publications went, um, social history, urban studies, slavery, all our books on slavery. I suppose that's the way the human psyche works but you know all we could think about for weeks was what we'd lost and then slowly we started realizing what we had and how many books we had I mean I was saying we didn't realize how much stuff we had after the fire if you look in the in the library catalog all the books and films and everything says lost in the fire it was like a global change so everything will say lost in the fire so now all that material that survived have to, has to be individually entered to say survived. So, I mean, you can imagine that's a lot of work. So we're doing that, I started doing that. One of the first things we're doing here is replacing enclosures and ensuring the reconciliations of all the collections that were kept off site so that the material can be returned to circulation. And in terms of the rest of the archives, as you can see, uh, there's a lot of reboxing, a lot of double checking, essentially a stock take that needs to be done um, in order to ensure that the collection is as intact as it can be. However, I did mention we've got quite a lot that's still frozen and we're not gonna have completed the reconciliation until we're done with that. So there are quite a lot of uh, measures currently in place to develop a, a conservation unit to move forward with conservation at UCT as a whole because currently there really hasn't been anything for at least the last two decades and um, digitization working towards um, you know really becoming more agile around digital humanities and digitization projects so we're engaging in that and um, yeah, really getting everything back in circulation. I, I don't think it's realistic that every single document in the archive will be digitized in the next year. Um, it's difficult to say what the future will hold. We warmly await confirmation of what will happen with the Jagger Library. That is still something that's um, an, a matter of debate and discussion whether the archive goes back into that basement. Personally, I think that archives should not be underground. I th if you look at the value of special collections, and that's, that's a, a topic for con of conversation at the moment, what is the value of special collections? Um, it gives you a peek into the past. It gives you a peek into the mind of an individual. It, it also allows you to share the creative outputs of individuals who were specialists in the field. It allows you to research and to create new knowledge from the past and the research of others from the past. So special collections has a very unique role to play. And I think as a librarian, it was an opportunity, and I think the whole, the whole reconciliation and handling of all the books was an opportunity to, to rediscover what is in the collection, to actually handle it, not just to know that it's in the collection because there's a record on the system, but to actually go in and handle all the books and to see just the breadth of the collection. You know, it's, it's nice, as I said earlier, it's nice to have so many books to, to work with, 
and it's been it's lovely to see the library growing and new books coming in and you know there's this the start really the seeds of, of the new African studies collection so this is the area that we are most proud of um, it shows that we have now got books back on the shelves which we are really very very excited about and very pleased about so what this is is this is the beginning of the newly rebuilt African Studies collection.